we're going to work on the tanks now. And what I want to show is what comes out of the package uh, that comes with your Black Horse uh, MiG-29. So here's some of the stuff that you'll see in that package. Let me just add these guys. So obviously you have your tanks. Um, they're fiberglass. The bungs are already installed for you. Uh, or the, the fittings and then you have your your fuel dots uh, that's that comes with a jet one for fuel I'm guessing and one for smoke and then the screws to attach the uh, fuel dots to to the fuselage you can glue them or however you want to do it and then you have your fittings so you have these copper pipes uh, four of them are short and two of them are long and Per the manual, you can see here how those are intended to go into 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 the jet. So, the um, the longer uh, 87 millimeters versus, I guess, uh, 55 on here. So that's 55, 87. So the short ones obviously go in the top of these uh, bungs. So your pickup and vent lines are going to use those. So that's why there's four pick up vent, pick up vent for each one. Um, and then these two copper uh, ones are the ones that you use to create a, uh, a stint inside the pickup line so that it doesn't fold over on itself. Then you have your T's and those, as you can see, let me pull this manual in a little bit. The T's go one in the vent line and one in the pickup line. Those, And then you have your clunks, uh, one for each tank. Then you have these zip ties that you are required to use to secure your tubing, your Viton or your Tigon to either one of these components, either your copper tubes or your T's or your clunks. Um, obviously I'm not going to be using zip ties, I'm actually going to be using what I prefer to use which is safety wire. So I have uh, bent my vent pipes and this is a fairly painful process but basically how I do it is uh, I insert this screwdriver in here and then just gently bend this with my hand. Um, these tubes are pretty stiff but you just take your time, I took my time and I basically worked them until they were bent to, to the right shape. The manual calls for a 40 degree angle but uh, I bent them, you know, roughly to what I think should be, as in 40 degrees between that and this going up. I think that'll be sufficient. Uh, so now we're going to stick these guys in here, sort of like so. So we're going to go from the inside. Because this is how you want it. It's going to go up so it sits in the tank, sort of like that. Um, and then we have our pickup line again uh, going through the rubber gasket there sort of like that and so that's what you have and this guy goes in here sort of like that and then the ceiling this rubber gasket will get squished down so the key here is to make sure that uh, when the setup is installed, that the vent faces uh, vertically up like that so that you can get as much fuel as possible in there. I'm just trying to get a test fit and make sure everything works out, and it does. So now that we have that, I'm going to pull this out, install my tubing inside the plane, and show you what that setup looks like before we button this down and press it. This setup I ended up with, uh, and you can see that in my case, I wanted to point this out, if you can't get this bend to be very sharp, you could just add tubing to the end of it. Um, but what's important is that you cut the top of it in a pattern that will allow, will not allow this tube to seal up against the top of the tank. You want that even if the tank sits in there, that there is a way for fluid to, to come in um, and or air to come in through uh, through that so this is what we have and I'm using Viton tubing and uh, we're gonna wire up all of this and insert it into our tank. Here's the final product almost um, you can see that the pickups vents are very much the same length and same size so with that done we're gonna seal this is loose we're gonna install this in the tank 
um, and then do a pressure test of the tank to make sure everything is good before we proceed to do it's time to leak test our tanks and what I've done is uh, installed my uh, fuel uh, fittings correctly and I've blown air into the tank and then clamped it the goal is to dunk this in water make sure I don't see bubbles and then once that's all done I want to unclamp one of these lines and what I want to hear is that air that I blew in escape that tells me the tank is sealed and there's no pinholes or any other way for fuel to leak out of it so far so good just do it the other way around okay so no bubbles there and so now we're just gonna yep and we heard all that air escape here my tanks are ready to go in and I've had a change of heart a little bit initially I was gonna go with the tees that come with the kit um, and there's nothing wrong with these tees I think they're great and they're good quality uh, the only problem is when it comes to fitting things in here you can see that it can be pretty tight uh, to get up in there and having to uh, pull out the tanks I thought would be a problem so instead what I'm gonna go with is these Festo tees now there are people who don't like these but I like the good quality stuff so if you get the Festo actual uh, tees um, and you use the Festo hard fuel line um, these work really well. So here's why I chose to use the Festo T connectors. You can see that bottom there, that's the one that goes to my pickups from both tanks. And this guy is the one that goes to my vents. And because they're push in fittings, it's very easy to disconnect those cables, sorry, those fuel lines, and take out the tanks, service, do whatever I need to do. About mounting the tanks. So, according to the manual, these tanks need to move, be placed in, in, in their spots, but go as far back to this bulkhead as possible. And they provide the manufacturer's Velcro for you to secure the tanks down. So I made a small change to how I'm gonna mount mine, and basically there's two things that I added. One is I uh, put Velcro on the bottom side, and then put the mating Velcro on the tank. Uh, the second thing is what I'd like to do is just provide some cushioning down here. What that setup looks like, you can see Velcro, foam pads, and these are just floating uh, in there. And then we're gonna attach the tank and secure everything down. The uh, drain of the vent, you can see starts back there, loops around, comes through here, and all the way out to the vent that is located right on the side of the aircraft and that is right here what we're looking at here is uh, the UAT and the fuel pump almost uh, fully installed they've been secured in place um, and basically how this works is uh, the fuel pump right here pushes fuel I'm using this uh, Festo um, quick disconnect just because it's easier to manage everything pushes fuel under there and that has a nice loop underneath and comes out through here and goes to the pump in the middle uh, and this guy obviously just goes straight to the tanks the T's that was in there and then finally we're gonna mount the uh, fill line on the side of the aircraft right there and what we're gonna use is the provided fuel dot so this guy comes with the jet and I've just marked the diameter of the inner portion of it we're gonna secure that in there okay so here we have the uh, fuel fill line and as you can see that just comes through the hole here we're gonna put this through the grommet we're gonna uh, screw this in place and then the cap just goes on the on on the fuel hose this is kind of stiff And then that all gets pushed into the jet and gets stowed so like far that. We've installed our fuel dot. I uh, sort of messed this up. Dropped some uh, acetone on this, so that's why it's discolored, but not a problem. 
um, and in the back we've installed our ECU our uh, shutoff valve again as I always keep saying uh, spiral wrap to protect the fuel line from the sharp edges or sand that down we've also installed our turbine the Swywin 140 fits perfectly um, almost like it was designed for this jet um, so we've routed all our wiring underneath and around the, the formers and as you can see it is all protected uh, by snakeskin and heat shrink just to keep it from damage so the last thing we really have to do is route our battery cable and our throttle and telemetry all the way to the front and obviously install our battery and then uh, we are done finally fuel system and turbine are completely installed and the position of my pipe uh, is right there I mean there's really no guesswork involved there's gonna be a nice uh, slot in the wood where the pipe just fits perfectly uh, the turbine if you're using a Swiwin 140 also is just cut out exactly where it's supposed to go in the jet so there's really no guesswork involved so next thing that we're gonna do is fire this guy up and uh, see how it all checks out <laughs> 